shout it out to my eye can I know your boss and gun, you are my done done In a mid times of tribulation You I could rely on yeah. I got tell you some my heart it broke from the dead My friend like I have this rope now Who I go help I row across this boat No silver lining on my life but just the darkest cloud You lose a brother, it never heals. Never heals. Pain never heals. When you lose somebody who you came up with like that, it don't get better. People be saying it get better. That's a, that's a lie. It's different when you lose a brother. It never heals. You're going to forever cry. You're going to cry out the blue. It never heals. You lose a part of you, like half of you be gone, you know. Yeah. John, no, stop. More time you take for granted to the time where you're spending with your friends. No, them gone, gone, gone. Yes, the splits are really not too hard. When I ask you, you make me laugh. When me tell you some of your to tell me some of smart, to break my heart, to see your boss. When the preacher pray over your body that day. Some me know me lose a friend It hurt me to me heart Life won't be the same Some me know me lose a friend Some me know me lose a friend Lose a friend Some me know me lose a friend yeah, yeah. Some me know me lose a friend Lose a friend Some me know me lose a friend mm. I got to shout it out to my eye gun I know your boss and gun, you are my done done In the mid times of tribulation You I could rely on, yeah I got to tell you some my heart it broke from the dead My friend like I have this rope now Who I got help I row across this boat No silver lining on my life but just the darkest cloud Yes. Everybody facing the same direction in the house and the foot is coming in first.
Good morning, everyone. Yeah, good enough.
Let us please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Praise be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our afflictions, and thus enables us to comfort those who are in trouble, with the same consolation we have received from him. I bless the body of Hearn with the holy water that recalls his baptism, of which St. Paul writes, all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we were buried together with him, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have set a limit to this present life, so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy you may command the name of your servant Hearn to be inscribed in the book of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
And this report concerning Jesus spread through the whole of Judea and all the surrounding countryside. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At the outset, let me take the opportunity to extend my sincerest condolences and uh, deepest prayers to Eugenia, Alice, the entire family, all those who knew and uh, loved her very well. Let me take the opportunity to welcome our parliamentary representative who is here among us who lends his presence to this funeral. Today is a, a hard day, a difficult day. It's a day to lament, to weep, to cry. When uh, young man, like our brother, dies, it tears us a lot. It hurts to the core. It brings people from left, right, north, south, east, and west together. When somebody like her, who's so young, dies, it kills possibilities and it destroys the future. So it seems. A friend of mine says when she was growing up that people would say the old must die, the young may die. But she says when she looks around and she watches the television obituaries, she sees that the young do die. This week at the, in our parish, we buried a young man of 31, a young lady of 48, and just in the neighboring parish of Fatima, a young man of 31, and today, her. It should make us think. It should make us think and reassess our lives. Especially for those of us who are young and youngish. <laughs> it should really make us think about you know, what our lives are about, what are they, what is essential in life, what are they, what's the purpose of my life and my being here on earth, or in, more specifically, in Loga? What is my community about? What are the goals that I have and I want to accomplish? Where does God fit into my life? All these are important, essential questions that need to be asked, that must be asked. Some people say youth is wasted on the young. Because when we're young, we free boy. We take risks unnecessarily so sometimes. And we forget, we behave selfishly, and we forget that our actions will have consequences in our lives and in the lives of others. Eugenia, you join a group of that is unenviable. A group that seems to be growing in Dominica. 
mothers who have lost sons. A category of women that is slowly but surely inching upwards. As we ponder today and think about life, its shortness, its fragility, we have to be able to look to the gospel, to wisdom, for some kind of response from God. For our own personal lives and for the life of our community. We must. This day cannot just pass like any other day. It must not pass like any other day for this community, especially here in Luda and for all the other communities around where young people are buried week after week after week. We must find some kind of reasoning and learn the wisdom of the ages to help us to see if we can stem the tide and, and change what seems to be very, very prevalent now. The first reading reminded us that the souls of the righteous or the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment will ever touch them. It's a reading that is very, very popular at funerals. But it's important to remember that first line. The souls of the virtuous, the righteous, are in the hands of God. Not any and everybody. The virtuous, the righteous, meaning those who have seek to live their lives rightly, Building good habits, a virtue is a, a good habit that is lived habitually. The virtues of faith, of hope, of love. The virtues of prudence, moderation, courage, fortitude. The virtues enable us to live rightly. There is a wrong way to live and there's a right way to live. I mean, better than it. Yeah. Yeah. Better than it. Because it means, it will mean life or death. And not just physical life and death, but eternal life or eternal death. And the thing is that God does not hide what it means to live rightly. God has revealed himself. And the book, the first, um, this book of wisdom from, this, from chapter 3 invites us to think about living with peace, living with discipline, living in a sacrificial manner, living with trust, faith, and above all love. Those are some of the human virtues that enable us to connect with God and to connect with one another. And that's very, very important for us today. And it's very, very important in the lives of young people and young adults and young men. I understand the, the drive that a lot of young men have to be independent, to be their own man. To do their own thing. But never forget that all of us have to account for our lives. That all of us will be judged on the way we live, on the relationships that we build, on the quality of our love. And in fact, the quality of our lives. There's another text from Wisdom chapter 4 that seeks to, to, to shed light on the death of a young person. It is a text that says that it is not the quantity of age that makes a person righteous or virtuous, but it is the quality of their life. 
It says that understanding is not ripe old age, but is the fear of the Lord. In fact, the psalmist says to us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That when you begin to fear the Lord, when you begin, in other words, not to tremble before God, but to live in the light of God's word, in the light of God's presence, then you begin to learn wisdom. You begin to learn what is the right way to live. To give your life, to share it. There are many young saints in the Catholic Church. Men and women who, at youth, in the, in the prime of youth, 20s, 30s. And they are saints because they learned the fear of God. They learned wisdom. St. Therese of Lisieux being one of those examples. My sisters and my brothers, today is a day for us, and especially as, as young men, to think about where does Jesus fit into my life? Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the one who died and has risen from the dead and now sits at the right hand of God. Jesus is the one who can give us the wisdom that we need to be able to live a full life here in this world and to live eternally with him forever. Because that's what we were made for. So the question is for us today, where does Jesus fit into my life? Do I have that humility to be able to surrender my life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Do I have the humility to recognize that he has planted a Christian community here and to become part of that community? The truth is a lot of our young men and young women for that matter, they are part and parcel of the community until they are 16 years old and then they decide, I am man, I am woman, I don't need God anymore. I don't need his church anymore. And so they absent themselves to their peril, to their peril. I wish I had known her, and maybe that is part of my own weakness and sin, uh, part of the struggle of being a priest, one priest in a large, vast area. I feel I should have known him, been able to have a conversation with Found out what made him tick. But alas, that can't happen anymore. But perhaps, perhaps sometime in the future I can have the opportunity with others. And that is the point to learn from this tragic situation, to learn its lesson, and to seek to live differently, or to live with the wisdom that we have learned. Eugenia, I wish I could give you back your son by Jesus being the woman of me. My own brother died in a car accident, and I know very much the pain of that. Um, but there's a, there's a wonderful story between me and this community, of adopted community there uh, during, that, during that time. And um, I can say categorically without fear or favor that I learned what brothers and sisters were in faith when that happened and with the relationship that we shared during that time when I was parish priest in Salisbury. That is my testimony. The Christian community there supported me and walked with me and held me up. And I am not ashamed to say that one, one Sunday, I don't know if you remember, one Sunday I was preaching and I broke down. And I couldn't say a word after that. And they started singing. Singing. And singing. And the whole congregation, you can't even really like to sing already, but the whole congregation started singing. And I felt the Spirit of God come back into my heart and my heart. 
I give that testimony now and then to where, whenever I preach, whenever the opportunity presents itself. Just like today, because the Christian community presents and, and, and represents Christ Jesus in this locale, in this community. That's what the community represents. Jesus, if they are, we are the body of Jesus in this world. And he invites us into this body to be part of his life that we may find eternal life. To have faith and to trust Jesus, to trust his word. I know that it becomes difficult to trust people these days. People get betrayed, they lose hope, they, they, people try to calm you down. But be careful of the idols that we make in our lives, brothers and sisters. We have to be careful of the idols that we make in our lives. The things that hold our hearts and hold our attentions and try to distract us from what is essential and basic to human living. I, I don't need to name them. You, name, you know them better than I do. And they're not the ones in the church. They occupy our time. They take our attention. They suck our life. Literally. Be careful. Be careful. So as we come together today, brothers and sisters, and we think about this young man who we long lies dead before us, we think about his family. The Book of Wisdom invites us to a righteous way of living, a right way of living, a virtuous way of living, a way of living that is disciplined, that is full of peace, that builds peace, that is lived in love, and reminds us that if we are to find that wisdom, then we want to turn to Jesus who is the source of that wisdom. Jesus is the source of the wisdom of life. And he is the one, not me, he is the one who will give, according to his good pleasure, according to his will, eternal life to those who find they are able to submit and to trust him. He is the one. So let us, brothers and sisters, as we come together today to pray, let us meet with those who are weeping. But let us also console them by celebrating and expressing our faith during this time of difficulty, this time of trial and grief. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father when he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. Our response is hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. In baptism, who receive the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah, our prayer. Our brother who was nourished at the table of the Savior. May the Lord welcome him now to the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah, our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us in the wake of the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. 
Show your mercy to those who suffer unjustly these sins against your love, and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. The family and friends of heard seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that can come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brotherhood. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of Jesus Christ's return. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread of our the fruit of the earth, and look at human hands. You will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine of the fruit of the vine, and look at human hands. You will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Brothers, and my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father and Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, our Lord and our Holy Spirit. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servanthood, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any state of sin have clung to Him, or any human fault have affected Him, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away. Through Christ our Lord and Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift your heart to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For it is at your summons that we come to birth. By your will we are governed, and at your command we return on account of sin to the earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. In a 
similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant bird who has journeyed from this world may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin and so receive the everlasting joys of resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, trusting in God, we have prayed together for her. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see him again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Let us therefore console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ.
Let us pray. Our brother Hearn has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother. Together may we meet Jesus Christ, who is our life, when he appears in glory. We read in Holy Scripture, our true home is in heaven, and Jesus Christ, whose return we long for, will come from heaven to save us. And again, Jesus Christ is the firstborn from the dead. Glory and kingship be his forever and ever. Amen. God of endless ages, through disobedience to your law, we fell from grace. But through the obedience and resurrection of your Son, Jesus, you revealed to us a new life. You granted Abraham, our father in faith, a burial place in the promised land. You prompted Joseph of Arimathea to offer his own tomb for the burial of the Lord. In a spirit of repentance, we earnestly ask you to look upon this grave and to bless it. So that while we commit to the earth the body of your servant, whom his soul may be taken into paradise, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Because God has chosen to call our brother Hearn from this life to himself, 
we commit his body to the earth. For we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory. For, we are, for he is risen, the firstborn of the dead. So let us commend our brother to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Dear friends and reverends, let us pray to God, the source of all mercies. Gracious Lord, forgive the sins of those who have died in Christ. Lord, hear us. Remember all the good they have done. Lord, hear us. Welcome them into eternal life. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for those who mourn. Comfort them in their grief. Lighten their sense of loss with your presence. Increase their faith and strengthen their hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Let us pray also for ourselves. Keep us faithful in your service and stir in our hearts a longing for heaven. Lord, hear us. With that longing, let us pray once again in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread. Loving God, from whom all life proceeds, and by whose hand the dead are raised again, listen to our prayers, and grant to your servant Graham, whose funeral day we have celebrated today, the inheritance promised to all your sins. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.
Let's go with it.
Anthology of Heard Joel Sandy Scotland. Heard J.S. Scotland was born on 28th February 1994. The first child of Eugenia Richards and Joseph of Scotland. Hearn attended the Loder Preschool and graduated to the Loder Primary School. He was a very keen student who excelled at most academic subjects. His excellence and zeal to acquire knowledge astounded the then principal, Mrs. C. Samuel, so much that she requested his mom's permission to promote him to grade six at age nine. This became obvious when she was assigned the students of grades four, five, and six to learn Psalm 24, and Hearn was able to recite the Psalm flawlessly at the end of the HFLE session. He had a passion for reading books which enriched his vocabulary, self-expression, and enhanced his ideas for writing and creating his personal literacy repertoire. which he was encouraged to exhibit at 4-H festivals, National Arts Festivals, and the Loader School's annual arts and crafts display. He got involved in community building projects and loved swimming, football, and cookouts with his friends at Titugosh. He was a graduate of St. Mary's Academy Science class of 2010 and later obtained the City and Guild's Merit level 2 IVQ diploma in electrical engineering with the Dominica State College in 2013. Hearn's employment journey was amazing. At secondary level, he worked as a part-time staff at HHV Church, then moved to a higher employment with Lake Road Development Project, then to the Geothermal Road Rehabilitation. 2014 to 2015 as an NEP intern with DASPA. These forms of employment did not appeal to his forte of engineering as he was overjoyed when he gained employment with Domlek in 2018. His employment with Domlek was short-lived due to an electrical shock on the high voltage electrical lines in the village of Pishley. Domlek has not dealt with this matter professionally and has not compensated him for this life threatening incident in any form. Boys like noise, boys like adventure, boys like bikes. The joy of life is freedom. That's the feeling Hearn had when he played with the Bali football team, participated in social events such as Carnival, World Creole Music Festival, or popular village feast. Yet, Hearn liked the thrill of music the rhythm and pitch of Buyo, Kadas, and Reggae. No one can define men without machines and tools which bring out their skills and intellect. Hearn was no exception. He delved into tasks which involved tools and machines. with a sense of dedication and accomplishment. The joy of living is freedom. With freedom comes the awe of Jehovah in our lives. Hearn found his peace and peace by reading the Bible in his spare time. Why do the heaven rage and the people imagine a vain thing? He once remarked, Psalms 2, 24 and 27. He studied, quote, quoted, and applied scriptures well to develop his personality, integrity, and self-esteem. Yes, Jehovah molds, trims, and fashion his people to delicate, pure vessels. This was evident as Hearn lived his last days. Boys like bikes, boys like cars, the speed of wheel they dare. Hearn invested money, 
time and skills in bikes and riding expeditions. With his buddies, Luan, Brendan, and Dishon, the song of the bike is the beat of the heart. The breathtaking rides are freedom from the hustle and bustle of life. 25th of June, 2023, and this was the most thrilling ride, but so unfortunate the night. This day, no one expected an accident which could have been avoided. Why exactly was a trailer parked on a dark village road, unmarked, no reflectors, no lights, no cones, no security tape on the brow of a hill like that? What? Is this an accident caused by a bike or an accident caused by a trailer? Ask the owner of the trailer who has yet to come up front to claim responsibility of such reckless action. Crushed, broken, dead, Hearn J.S. Scotland. Man's imagination is the foolishness of Jehovah's wisdom. Hearn lives 1994 and beyond. A spirit in Jehovah's hands, man lives. Ransomed by Yahshua's blood, a crown of glory set on his brow. Hearn J.S. Scotland is now enthroned with the angels of heaven, celestial board. Rest in peace, my son, rest in peace, for no evil can harm you there. This is your moment of perfection. Your journey is complete. No one can pluck you from Jehovah's hands. Likewise, we await perfection and the Father's mercy and salvation. Rest in peace, Hearn J.S. Scotland.
Okay, let me on behalf of management and staff of Lynnhurst Funeral Services. Of course, in my capacity as the funeral director, again express our sincere condolences to you, the grieving family's friends, and of course, well wishes. And also to extend our gratitude, our thanks, and of course, our appreciation to you for affording Lynnhurst the privilege to put your loved one to rest, of course, with respect, with love, with pride, with honor, and dignity. May the good God bless this great family to touch you from your crown of your head to the sole of your feet. And for those of us traveling back home, traveling mercy. Amen. We want to thank our parish priest for an excellent mass. We want to thank the choir. We want to thank the Paul bearers. I want to thank 767 bike riders in a very special way for escorting me here with the body. I want to recognize Ebo News in a very special way for reaching out to the many persons who would love to be here with us today, but because of certain circumstances, they are under control, it's not possible. Your parliamentary representative, Honorable McIntyre, we recognize you. Sorcery, we recognize you. Don't mess for standing with your friend and your brother and your former colleague. 
And thanks to all of you for pledging your love, your support, your telephone calls, your flowers, your visit. Just being there for that great family. We say thank you so very much. Get home safe. Happy weekend with God. Blessing. Amen. 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 The family extends their deepest gratitude to all those who showed their support through visits, prayers, like calls, flowers, gifts, words of sympathy, like and more at the passing of their beloved. To the loving memory. Which we shared, Once again, he will forever live in our hearts. Safe drive back down. We ask you all to friend. continue to yes, keep our family in peace. your prayers. Yes, this was the funeral service and burial of Hearn Joel Sandy Scotland. This live was brought to you by Emo News. As always, it was our pleasure doing this for the family and friends who could not be present here in person with us today. Once again, we want to thank you for viewing. We want to thank you for choosing Emo News and sure do have a pleasant we'll afternoon. Well, all you know, when you see our boy, all you know, we can see our you can see any of us. You tell us when you are man dying, no one is that people. You guys can come around. Oh, you only pass my phone. You see, you saw them. You go I'm going to